Hey y'all, what up though, how you doing? Listen, it's lunchtime again. And as I was preparing to finish reading um, the scriptures I have for reading today, or just where God is leading me. So let me let me start with this. I I grew I grew up in church, right? Well, not even I say church. I grew up knowing who God was, who Jesus was. My mother was a, that was a big deal in our lives. Um, I didn't I wouldn't necessarily say I grew up in church, consistently going to church growing up. I did go to private school, so I went to a private Christian school from like second grade to tenth grade. It was a, a full K through twelve school, and so I spent majority of my years there. I didn't like it at the time. I really wanted to go to private school. I mean, public school. I wanted to go to the neighborhood school with all the kids and in the neighborhood and do all that. Right? My mom's like, "Mm, -mm you ain't doing that. Not happening." So, um, I had a very strong foundation in who God was and who Jesus was. As I grew up, um, I've always had that. I've always had a reverential fear of God. Um, and I was faithful to church. And it's funny because I was thinking about this in the shower yesterday. I was faithful to church, but I wasn't faithful to God. So I'm in church on Sunday. I'm at Bible study on Wednesday. I went to a small church at one point. So we were very active. We were very hands-on, setting up, tearing down. You know, I was a leader of, of the women's ministry. I was part of the intercessory prayer team. Like, I was very faithful to church, but I wasn't faithful to God. I didn't have a relationship with Jesus like I have now. And it had gotten to the point where it was like, and I may have shared this on other videos. I'm sure I have. And I'm getting to why I started this little video. It's going to be quick. It's not going to be long. Um, and I got to the point where it was like, okay, Lord, I need more of you. Because first thing I, I kept saying was, I don't think I love myself well because I entertain things I shouldn't. I stay in situations longer than I should, knowing that I shouldn't be there. And I just allowing things that if I truly loved and valued who I am as a person, I shouldn't be allowing these things. So I need to get to know who I am, who God says I am. So that's where it all started. And so I started reading my Bible every day. I was just made of conscious effort and habit. And I was consistent in reading my scriptures every day and spending time with God. And I'm like, this is all I know to do. I don't know what else to do. So, Lord, you're going to have to show up. And I asked for your wisdom, your understanding, your revelation, and knowledge. I, I labeled it work. W-U-R-K. Wisdom, understanding, revelation, and knowledge. And as I've done that over the last two years, my relationship intimately with God has grown all the more. And it is, I'm just so... I'm so honored that he has allowed me to um, just come into the level of intimacy that I have with him right now. And I'm still trying to go deeper. I'm still want more like, Lord, how do I get more? What do I need to do? How do I? I need to hear that I hear that I know that I know. I don't want to make mistakes. And I know life is about making mistakes and, and it builds our character and all these different things. But I don't want to make just unnecessary mistakes because I wasn't heeding the voice of the Lord when he was telling me to do something because I've been missing it. So that's how I got to the point of where I am today. Am I perfect? Far from it. If anything, it's shown me more than ever how much of a faulty human being I am, how much of a sinner I am. Because at one point in my life, I think I was a little righteous. I know I was. My mom used to tell me a long time ago, my parents are deceased. She was like, you ain't nobody, you just like your daddy, ain't nobody right but you. And I was like, well, that's not true, but I am right most of the time. I think I still write most of the time. But I've learned that even in being right, it's not necessarily about being right. And I was talking to a coworker today, and it's going a whole nother way than I intended. I was talking to a coworker today, and she, she's really having a, a difficult time at right now with work and some things that are going on. And she's like, well, I think, you know, they want me to apologize or something. And I said, well, you know what? I had to do that same thing. I had to mend the offense. I had to apologize to an individual for the way, um, be, I had to apologize for offending them, so to speak. You know, and I referred back to scripture where God says, before Jesus was talking um, in the New Testament about if you offend your neighbor and you bring in your sacrifice to go and make amends. Let me pull it up real quick. I know it's in the New Testament. I feel like it's in Matthew. I think everything in Matthew. Um, um, see where it is here it is 
it is Matthew, Matthew 18, 20. It says, well, this is English Standard Version. I think that's what it is. If your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between him and you alone. If he listens to you, um, no, that's not the one I want. That's not it. Hold on, wait a minute, y'all. If you... Let me see. Where is it? Here it is. Matthew 5. Okay. Matthew 5, 23 through 24. I think that's it. We're going to read it together. Let me find a version I like. New Living Translation. So if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple and you suddenly remember that something you had, that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go up and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice. So I was mentioning this to her. I said... I had to go and offend, amend the offense. I didn't apologize for what I said because what I said needed to be said, but I apologize um, for maybe the way I said it or if it left you in an offended way because I never want to do that. I want to do everything in love and give it to you the way God has given, to give it to, given, me, given it to me to give to you and I'm going to do just that and I'm going to try my best to present it to you um, in a loving manner, but I'm going to say what needs to be said. Um, and so I had to go and do that. And so we were talking about that mending of fences and that kind of thing. And so I just say all that to say that my relationship with God and coming closer to God has truly caused me to grow in many areas. It has truly shown me all my self-righteousness, my areas of judging, um, the areas I need to work on, the areas I'm not perfect at, the, the things that I thought I had all together, that I got, I'm good because I ain't out here stealing and killing and cheating and all that because I'm, I'm good. Um, it shows you all the more that you're not. And so as I finished up with some meetings for this morning, I'm on lunch right now. I got ready to get back into my word. And I was like, wow, you know, I really enjoy reading my scriptures. And I enjoy reading my Bible that I have as a New Century version, which I've had for a long time. But I really like the New Living Translation. Um, and I had bought a newer New Living Translation version last year. I bought one and it was really good. I enjoyed it, but I, I wasn't used to it because, excuse me, the Bible I've had now I've had for almost 13 years, so I kind of know where stuff is. I can kind of flip to it. I may not really remember the, the actual scripture, but I kind of know where it's at, and I can flip and find it, and I got stuff highlighted, so it's comfortable for me. But the other thing that I, I got um, because of one of the, um, that was um, that was recommended to me is this here, this Tony Evans Bible Commentary. And I mentioned this to my auntie the other day because she called me, and she said, niece girl i need some help with studying the bible because i'm i'm tired i'm in genesis and i can't get past genesis and i said well why do you start in genesis she said because ain't that where you're supposed to start at i said start wherever the lord leads you he may not have had you to start in genesis maybe he has to lead you to start somewhere else i said i would pray and ask god lord where do you want me to start at where are we where are we where are we working from today you don't necessarily have to start in Genesis because the beginning of the book. I think you got to go Genesis through Revelations and that thing. And so I sent her some information that I got from a YouTube video I watched with Pris Priscilla Shira, Shira, whatever her name is, about studying the Bible study and kind of picking out a scripture that God is highlighting to you and meditating on that scripture, studying that scripture. What does that scripture mean? What does that scripture mean to you? I said, because you can read pages and pages of scripture but if you're not taking that and applying it to your life, what good is it? It's just you read more scripture and then you can say, oh, I read all the Bible from beginning to the end. Okay, well, how much? You still a heathen. Ain't nothing changed in your life. You still out here running the muck, just popping off at the mouth, saying what needs to be said because that's just who you are and, 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 and calling yourself a certain zodiac sign. That's a whole nother thing, y'all. We might talk about that in another video because I had to be delivered from that too. Even though I was never big on Zodiac signs, but it was just that whole initial labeling of, oh, what's your sign? Oh, I'm a such and such. Mm -mm, I'm a child of God. I don't, I don't, I don't adhere to any of those Zodiac signs, but that's a whole nother, I can go into a whole nother tangent range about that. But I just wanted to recommend this because this book helps me to understand scripture all the more. And it just gives some commentary behind what was being said and that kind of thing. So I'm going to do one with you right, real quick. So I was reading actually um, in First Peter 
the third ver the third chapter that talks about wives and husbands and submission and that whole thing. We know how people get when they hear the word submission, child. That's a whole another story. But I'm gonna get I'm gonna read this to you here so you can kind of get an understanding of how this is. Um, so it talks about it, it it goes through the scripture and then it gives you some commentary. Let me show you real quick. So it gives you kind of you know some information behind the scripture and that kind of thing. So I'm going to read this part to you. Let's see. This talks about submission and the wife submitting to the husband and all those great things. But then it says here, what if the husband isn't obeying Christ? How can a wife follow him? Indeed, how can you follow a parked car? Understand that a man needs his wife to help him and encourage him to be the, to be the leader God appointed him to be. While a wife would not transform her husband by nagging, fussing, and complaining, God can transform a husband when he observes his wife's pure, reverent life. If some husbands disobey the word, wives may be able to win them over by honoring their God-given role without compromising their spiritual commitment. There is no compromise. So that just kind of gives some more comment it's a commentary it's awesome and it's not expensive i feel like it was twenty dollars or something i got it from amazon it wasn't very expensive i know it was under thirty dollars i'm sure of that like 99 percent sure but i th i find this really helpful and it, and it just it helps reading the bible for me to be more um it's fun i don't know it's just interesting and some days i don't feel like it though i'm like i don't feel like that but then when i do I, I get in here and i start reading and God just starts ministering and speaking to me. And I, I just, it's just, it's life-giving. And I, I find that when I do it, my day changes. When I do it, my circumstance and my outlook changes. But yet, let me, let me change that. Not even that my circumstance may change, but my outlook and my perspective changes when I spend time in the Word of God. So, there was one last thing I wanted to say too. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So as I was looking at this about wives, and I'm not married. I've been married. I was married when I was very young, 22. Um, so I've been divorced for a very long time now. Um, child, I don't know how long. A very long time, about 17 years, something like that. 15 years, 16 years, something. Um, but I, I, I desire marriage, and that's a the desire that the Lord has given me. And so I have... I'm allowing God to teach me what that means for me as a wife and how that it is wife and I'm a wife to God first and that whole thing. And so as we were looking at this and submitting and we talk about prayer and we think about, you know, a wife praying for a husband or a husband praying for a wife and praying for God to change them and when that ultimately shouldn't be the prayer and the prayer should be more about God changing me. Right. And, and I was thinking about, I don't know if you've ever seen this analogy, but we'll, you'll see where they have like a triangle and at, at one corner of the triangle is the husband, the other is the wife. And then at the top is God. And as we grow individually seeking God, going towards God, then we come to we grow towards one each other, one another, right? So each individual is seeking God for themselves. And as you seek God, he changes you. He transforms you from the inside out. He does all these things, weight is dropping off, bad attitude, whatever the case may be, he's changing you as a person as you're growing closer to him. And as each individual grows closer to God, they grow closer to each other. And so that right there was just a, a revelation that God gave me just that in that midst. Because I've seen that whole triangle analogy before, but it never clicked to me until today. And so I think even in the time of reading the word of God, you may not get it from the word, but we know the word of God is living. It's alive. And I'm going to close with this. Hebrews 4. We're going to say this. Hebrews 4. Here it is. 412. God's word is alive and working and is sharper than a double-edged sword. It cuts all the way into us where the soul and the spirit are joined to the center of our joints and bones. And it judges the thoughts and feelings in our hearts. 13. Nothing in all the world can be hidden from God. Everything is clear and lies open before him. And to him, we must explain the way we have lived. God's word is alive. It's working and it's sharper than a double-edged sword. So allow God to minister to you, to speak to you while you read his word and expect that. Like when I go in, I'm like, Lord, okay, I'm expecting to hear from you. Holy Spirit, have your way. I invite you in. Lead me, teach me, guide me, show me. Give me wisdom, understanding, revelation, knowledge. 
I think that's it. All right. I'm gone. I love you. God loves you. Jesus loves you. Have a good day. Bye.